Back for another flight test. This is the 1.7 meter PA18 Super Cub from our friends at FMS. Recently flight tested the 1.3 meter version, which was brilliant. The short takeoff, landing, you know, stall characteristics of that airplane were brilliant. And I'm expecting this to be even better. Bigger planes normally fly better, and it being just that, you know, a bit bigger, 40 centimetres wider on the wingspan could make a huge difference to the way it flies. Let's not hang around, let's take the components out of the box, let's see what we get. Starting off by showing you how well this thing is packaged. Take the foam carton out of the box and this is what you get. You can see that everything is held down very securely so there is no chance of it moving around and getting damaged while it's in transit to your door. Always like to see this with FMS models, it is always the case. So again, let's uh, unbox it and then we can review the separate components. Ta-da! <laughs> Sometimes I just can't do it. So in here, uh, we've got the absolutely the same always on these FMS, FMS models. So the Velcro, you take one um, side off the Velcro there and put it on your battery if you need to. You've got two straps to hold the battery in place against the Velcro. And then we've got the lead from the speed controller for our battery, which is a 4S 2200 to 2600 apparently. XT60, that's what I use. I use XT60s or 90s. Then we've got all the leads for the, from the Reflex 2 gyro stabilization system, which is that little orange box in there. Gives us three modes, uh, well, off, and then stabilized, which is for beginners, if you want to have uh, auto leveling, and uh, optimized, which is reduces the effects of the wind on the model, which can make a windy day a nice day to fly on, would you believe? Uh, so we've got all the cables out. Now, interestingly, we've got this one cable uh, S-Bus PPM mode. So if you have a S-Bus receiver, which I will with the FR Sky X8R receiver, I can just plug that in. And I will not have to plug in the other stabilized control surfaces, so aileron, elevator, and rudder. I will not have to plug into the receiver. That will all be taken by uh, uh, handled by the S-Bus connection. I will have to plug in uh, flap and throttle. I think, maybe not throttle, I can't remember. Maybe throttle goes over S-Bus as well, but flat I don't think does. So just those two into the receiver just makes it a little quicker to set up. Um, I think that's that. Then we're gonna to have to put the wings on. Got a uh, tube, carbon tube. Uh, just push the wings on and automatically the electrical connections for the lights and the aileron and uh, flap will be done, nothing else to do and just two bolts. Moving to the back we have the elevator servo on the side will connect up or push on the elevators and bolt them on. We've got uh, I think a smaller uh, rod tube, carbon tube to slot through to reinforce the horizontal stabilizers and on the other side we'll have the rudder servo already connected up and a steerable tail wheel and we've got big big wheels big wheels which is great actually when you're doing winter flying off the model flying club site um obviously it's you know it's going to be a bit bumpy during winter with all the weather so um that that's great and we'll make for soft landings as well. Uh, then we've got a bag of hardware. Uh, you see the spinner in there and the bolts will be in there and other bits and pieces. And the wings. So as with the 1.3 meter version, we've got these struts that are very quick to connect onto the fuselage. The elevator and flap, sorry, the aileron and flap servos already in place, already hooked up with the push rods, with ball links for great precision control when you're flying the model. So that's good. I think that's it. So very going to be very quick to assemble, just like the 1.3 meter version. 
So give me a few minutes, I will be back and I will show what it looks like all assembled and any tips on assembly. But I uh, like the 1.3 meter version, I really couldn't fault it. There's, if you follow the manual and all you've got to do is follow the pictures, then it really just takes five to 10 minutes to put one of these together. And there it is, all assembled. Uh, took, you know, only took five to 10 minutes uh, because you basically bolt it together. The only bit of gluing you need to do is for this aerial here. That is it, otherwise it all bolts together. A child can put one of these together with a little bit of help because the instructions are so clear. So looking under the canopy, you will see that I've got my FR Sky XHR receiver in there. Don't need that many channels, but that's my standard receiver. And then I've got a 4S2200 pack from my friend George at 4Max that I'm using in there. Um, and then on the radio, on my new Radio Master Boxer, again super easy to set up. So going across, see I have got the model name set up and inputs, it's just simple aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. Two position rates on the SA switch and 30% exponential. Is there anything below that? Yes, um, channel 6 is flaps and then the mode for the stabili reflex stabilization system is on 7. Going across again, same really mapped on mixes and then on outputs you can change the uh, the the throw and the if you want to reverse the channel and the center point that is it really really easy to do so all that remains now is to take it down the flying field and get this 1.7 meter PA 18 into the air and see how it flies all right here we are with the PA 18 Super Cub the 1.7 meter down the flying club let's get it in the sky and see how it flies see if it flies as well as the 1.3 meter all right we'll try a short takeoff shall we with half flap Yeah, <laughs> as, predicted, as predicted, straight up. Right, so just making sure we're all trimmed out and that's pretty good. So a regular circuit, actually, let's put some down trim in. There you go, that's good. Right, bring it in a bit closer for Jason. I want to see the world shortest touch and go. Alright, well we'll just do let's just do some basic stuff first. So power's good. Definitely. Come down this end, we'll do a stall turn. Good. Rolls nice. Let's try a loop coming down, coming down, coming down. Quite a strong wind today. Kind of 15 mile an hour wind over the top. Virtually do it on the spot, the wind. All right, flaps. Flaps too. That's half flap. Draw Holding, hand, huh? Draw 
So having to use ailerons quite a bit and rudder to keep it pointed into wind, which is a bit more diagonal now. It is quite um, gusty today, so I'm not going to be s silly and uh, do ultra low passes, especially inverted, one gust and it will just tip the wing. You can see how bumpy it is. So nice, all right, let's uh, bring it in for a landing then. So bang in the flap, you can see how it reacts and the gives the pitches up a bit. <laughs> oh, that's the wind. Kill the flap, kill the flap, bring it around. Oh no, it's not going to go that way, is it? No! <laughs> Imagine if you did that in a full size. <laughs> Should we just try like we did with the 1.3 meter, the, uh, the quick takeoff? I'm, you know, I'm not going to do all flap takeoff. Half, half lap is enough. Here we go. From standing start. <laughs> that's, I think that's quicker, isn't it, than the 1.3? <laughs> that's full flap. It's turned into a kite. You have to side slip. There you go. <laughs> Brilliant. Amount of fun, even on a windy day like today. So that's the 1.7 metre PA18 Super Cub from our friends at FMS. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe, click the bell icon for notifications of future uploads and live streams. You might want to give a thumbs up if you like this video, but this really enjoyed it, even better than the 1.3 meter and able to cope with the windy conditions. The link is in the video description and the pinned comment. Thanks to Jay on camera, no and we'll be back in the near future for more Essential RC. Bye. Let's try a loop, coming down, coming down, coming down. Quite a strong wind today, kind of 15 mile an hour wind over the top. Virtually do it on the spot, the wind. <laughs>